It's unusual. Police are saying after the body of a missing person was identified today, and it's not the news friends and family members were hoping to hear. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm McLeod Hickeman. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. The LaSalle County Coroner announced just hours ago that it was Jelani Day found near the Illinois River back on September 4th. The Danville native was ID'd through dental records. WCI3's Bryce Beeman is with us. You talked to police. What can you tell us? Bloomington Police Department held a news conference with the update on the missing ISU grad student. The coroner said the cause of death is unknown until he has more answers. Police told us right now this is a death investigation. They say they are not ruling out foul play. Day was reported missing on August 25th. His family last spoke to him on Monday, August 23rd. Local and state police, the FBI, and other departments are still investigating. Just right off the bat was unusual. Um, do I want to say that, you know, it was foul plays suspected? Uh, we don't know. It was just so unusual um, and somewhat suspicious that it, it just kind of piqued our interest of, hey, this is not normally how missing persons go. Police were asked why it took so long for Day to be identified. He said he was unsure. Now, of course, Jelani Day's family is devastated at today's news. They wrote on Facebook they want answers. What they're doing to find those answers tonight at 6. Back to you guys. All right, Bryce, thanks so much. Meantime, several parents in Champaign made the choice to keep their kids home from school today after a threat was posted to social media. WCI3's Jamie Mays has been covering this story. Now, Jamie, you talk with police today. What are they saying? Mac, they are investigating a social media threat believed to have been targeted to Centennial High School. They say they were putting more resources into safety even before that threat was made. Officials could not give details about what happened, but they say this is because they say this is still under investigation. But they want families to know they are in constant contact with the district. They understand this is concerning, and they are working around the clock to move the investigation along and ensure the safety of everyone. Parents I spoke to said they are keeping their kids home. They're home for the next two days. Um, it's not anything against the school. It's giving them time to figure out what's going on. Um, but they don't need to do that with my kids in the building. Police say due to recent events, they plan to have more added presence and to remain visible. That will continue through tomorrow. At that point, they will reevaluate. Police say all students, staff, faculty, parents, and loved ones deserve a safe learning environment. They say if parents do not feel comfortable sending their kids to school, it is their parental right not to do so. They are asking anyone with information about this threat to contact police or Crime Stoppers. Back to you, Mac. All right, Jamie, thanks so much. Meantime, metal detectors were in place at Centennial High School in Champaign. Every student had to walk through them yesterday. It's important to note they're not permanently installed in any building. The district told us today they're a protective layer of security. To maximize the effectiveness of their random use, the district would not share information about the schedules or locations. An Urbana woman has died after being shot earlier this week. It happened in an apartment building parking lot on East Florida Avenue near Adams. Police say 32-year-old Brittany Lane was in the passenger seat of a car Monday night. Another person in the car had a gun and it went off. Authorities say the gun belonged to 27-year-old Devontre Newbill. Police say he's a convicted felon who wasn't allowed to have a gun. He faces several charges. Springfield police arrested two teenagers after responding to a shot spotter alert. They were called to Johnson Park in East Laurel on Monday. 18-year-old Lafonso Swope and a 16-year-old boy are facing several charges, including possession of a firearm and manufacture and delivery of cocaine. Police say they found spent shell casings near a home and found two guns, meth, ecstasy, marijuana, body armor, and a digital scale inside. The DeWitt County Coroner identified the man who drowned in Clinton Lake this week. 65-year-old Alan Bell from Clinton died Tuesday morning at the Valley Mill Fishing Access. Authorities say the truck he was driving went into the water. He was able to get out, but he slipped into the lake and then drowned. A fallen state trooper is honored in Paxton today. Trooper Marvin Archer was shot and killed while approaching a stolen vehicle in 1946. Now, 75 years later, a part of Route 9 was named in his honor where he lived. It was time uh, that we recognized him for both him and his family, and we thank them for the sacrifice and dedication and commitment to protect and serve the community, and it was time that we needed to do this. 
State Representative Tom Bennett and State Senator Jason Brickman teamed up to put that legislation together. Governor Pritzker announced a new grant program to get more people back to work. The grants are targeted for workforce training centers. And WCI3's Cole Hankey joins us live from our Capitol Newsroom tonight. Now, Cole, the governor is hoping these programs help people find jobs. That's right, Mac. Many workers in trade fields lost their jobs during the pandemic. And they're not having much luck getting them back right now. So this new grant program dedicates $44 million in grants to centers that will work to teach people new skills so they can find new jobs. The money comes from the American Rescue Plan, but the grants won't stop at just job training. Support centers and job placement centers to help people find jobs are also in this pool where this money could be heading. Uh, these are programs that will allow people to earn head of household wages and be able to have a great um, middle class and beyond uh, success in their lives. Now, the governor also announced that $4.4 million will also go specifically to job training for at-risk youth across Illinois. And the governor's office estimated that that $44 million that they are dedicating to these grants will go on, estimated to go on to help about 1,500 people across the state of Illinois. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Cole Hankey, WCIA3, your local news leader. All right, Cole, thanks so much. A recording of a Springfield school board meeting was flagged by YouTube for spreading misinformation about the coronavirus vaccine. The district held a public comment period, and while YouTube did not specify which part of the recording the misinformation was in, the district assumed it was during the public comment period. The district appealed that decision, and YouTube restored the video to the district's channel. Different cultures eat different kinds of food. How the Eastern Illinois Food Bank is trying to make sure that everyone gets something. Plus this. COVID-19 pandemic is still with us. It's still here. The Delta variant is still um, very present, and it is deadly. So we are not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. Our Chicago leaders are hoping to get more people vaccinated and whether it could impact people right here at home.